On this episode of Captain's Tales, we will do battle with the acrobatic and graceful Atlantic sailfish. Fish ate a goggle eye on a long tight bait. It's a release. Throughout maritime history, there have been experts on the water who knew how to navigate and locate their bounty. These individuals held the secrets to where, when, and how. This still holds true today. Get ready for an angling experience filled with sea secrets, fantastic fishing, and great destinations. For on this show, it's only the captain and the camera. On this episode of Captain's Tales, we're headed offshore out of Lake Worth Inlet. Our captains today are Captain Matt Allgood and Captain Mark Wadlinger aboard the Catch One. The day begins with setting the sea anchor and the tedious task of flying the kites and rigging the baits. One of the trickiest parts about live bait sail fishing is actually learning how to fly the kites. There's a little bit of a learning curve and you know different wind conditions and different angles of the kite because when you have two of them you need to angle them out. And it's, uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but what you do basically is you weight the outside of the kite with little split shots, um, and you try and get the right altitude along with the right direction. So sometimes you may have to add a little more weight or slide the bridle up a little bit to make the kite go higher, and uh, you kind of have to play around with it a little bit, but it's very important that you do that before you start fishing because you want your spread to be in the best angle possible. Um, you don't want the boat to be blocking it. Uh, sailfish typically swim from north to south, so if for some reason, um, let's say your boat's directly headed north and your kite is directly behind you, that's just not a good angle because the fish would have to swim under your boat to get to your kite. So we want to spread those baits out as far as we can. It also gives us a different column of water because these kites are out uh, over 100 yards. So you, know, you may have one bait in uh, 80 feet of water and you can have another one in 120 feet depending on where the edge is. So it's nice to be able to hit a different you know, column of water. It's a great advantage of the kite. You get such a spread. You get everything away from the boat, and it just seems to be a very effective way to catch sailfish. This is serious angling business, so no detail is overlooked. During the winter months, the Atlantic sailfish migrate up and down the east coast of Florida in large pods, feeding on bait fish from Palm Beach to the Florida Keys. The baits that we use are called season baits. Basically how it works is we go out and catch our bait a couple weeks before a tournament. And what we do is we put them in a pin and try and get them to eat. What it does is it makes them healthier. Uh, when you catch a bait, it stresses it out and they kind of lose their uh, you know, toughness. They lose their slime, their skin becomes kind of rough. Put on the uh, center kite bait on the right side and the fish is missing the bait. Took a couple swings at it, and uh, he missed it. Maybe he'll come back. Bait still looks pretty lively. Just sitting here in free spool waiting for the fish to come up. That way, when you see him, you can uh, be ready to drop it back to him. Right when we were putting the baits out. Wasn't even set up or ready yet. Hmm. All right, we'll put it back in the clip and see, uh, see if we can get another fish up. I don't see it. Huh? Where's the bobber? Oh, yeah, is it? Oh, yep, yeah. cut off. Yeah. 
two meat on the middle now. Think like about a 30 pound sailfish, ate a goggle eye on a long kite bait. Still got a couple baits in the water, looking for a uh, multiple hookup. Nice and easy. Only three or four pounds of drag. Circle hook in the corner of the mouth. Sailfish are always released in the water at boat side, and circle hooks are used to ensure their survival. Here we go. Want to put in here, maybe? One down. When we're fishing for sailfish, we primarily use kites. Um, we also use circle hooks. Uh, we're live bait fishermen. So we use goggle eyes, threadfin herring, pilchers, sardines, or cigar minnows. So we like to have a big variety of bait because sometimes it seems that fish will eat one bait. So, you know, we like to have a good mix of baits. Fishing with the kites, we usually put two kites out um, depending on you know how aggressive the tournament is, either before or six line tournament. Um, and we'll fish three baits on each kite. Every once in a while we'll also fish a flat line just on a spinning rod. Um, it's also nice to have a spinning rod out and ready in case you see sailfish because sailfish do tail, especially when you get a north wind here in South Florida. Um, seems like in the afternoon they'll get up on top and they kind of surf down in the sea. And you actually see pods of fish and it you know, sometimes can be you know, 20 or 30 fish in one pot of fish. We've got a Daiwa Saltist 50. It holds about 520 yards of 20 pound. It's a high speed reel, 6.4 to 1, uh, very fast. It's on a 6 foot 2 black fin rod. It has a very, very soft tip, very gentle. We come down, this is Andy, 20 pound backcountry. We go to a stainless ring. This is what goes in the kite clip to a small red marker so we can see where the bait is and, and see if a fish is hitting it. Below that, we get a small lead. Leads change depending on the wind. Sometimes we fish with a very small lead. Go to a bead just to protect the knot from the lead. A small 
50 pound class snap swivel. Then we come to, uh, this is perfection loop, to 15 feet of Andy fluorocarbon uh, 40 pound. And then we snell our hooks. We lay it on the inside with a snell. It doesn't go through the eye. And then we have two rubber bands on an Eagle Claw 8 2004. When we're rigging our goggle eyes, we actually use what I call the claw because we use a lot of pin baits and they're very slippery, so they have a lot of slime. So what we do is hold them like that so they don't slip out, make a little space here, and then put your needle in. I like to put mine a little deeper. Go straight through, take the rigging band, put it on, pull it through quickly. All you do is just loop it back on, and that is a rig bait. Palm Beach is a great spot to catch sailfish. Uh, it's very close to the shoreline. Uh, we can fish a mile off the beach. We're in 100 feet of water. It's a very close proximity to the Gulf Stream. So a lot of times we'll have really clean blue water with the current, and the sailfish seem to really like that. And we fish edges, and a lot of the you know tide lines and, and different edges form from the eddies and the, the currents that come with the Gulf Stream. Uh, a lot of times we fish on bottom structures, and the reason that that bottom structure has like an upwelling from the current. So that you know, the current's pushing along, it's pushing a lot of bait and debris and kind of stirring up the water and it's bringing nutrients in and it's kind of a food chain effect. And so a lot of the sailfish like to stay in like a certain area uh, near a good piece of bottom structure. And that's a great part about you know, Palm Beach is there's wrecks and reefs and you know, stuff for you know, 40 or 50 miles each way up and down the coastline. And it's all, like I said, only a mile off the beach. Today was a great representation of what to expect on a typical winter day of you know, sail fishing in South Florida. Um, the only thing that was a little bit off was an east wind. Um, we do prefer fishing underneath a north wind, but today was very successful. We only fished for about a half a day. We were three for four. Uh, we caught two of the fish off the kite. We caught another one on the flat line. Um, just goes to show you there's different ways to do it. And you know we had some good action. Uh, the bites were fairly good. The fish jumped a lot and it was you know, not real crowded. There's plenty of space down here and there's lots of shoreline to, to fish along. So today turned out to be a great day. Captain Mark and Captain Matt are a well-known team in the sailfish tournament circles. Their proficiency in the art of using bait kites and the numbers of fish caught and released makes the Catch One Sailfish team a force to be reckoned with. Still got uh, five other baits in the water. Hopefully we can get a, get a double or triple and really make a mess. A lot of times they'll go down and kind of dig in and, and chill out for a little while. And you won't get a lot of progress either way. They won't really pull on or you won't really be gaining, but then uh, you feel them and they're gonna come up to the surface because they start taking off. And that's where you, you just kind of look out in the horizon and wonder how big your belly is because they could be to the left or to the right. And you never really know, sailfish are very erratic. They uh, like to turn and flip and jump. The fish is on the surface. 150 yards in front of the boat, and it looks like I'm on the bottom. There we go, now we're getting some belly out. Kinda looks like the fish is just up there laying on the, laying on the surface, must have gone down 40 or 50 feet, and then decided to come straight up, and now I'm finally getting to pick up some of this belly. Getting a lot better angle now. We used to use J-hooks and a lot of fish you would gut hook and their, their guts would literally pull out and you'd see like a big red you know, stomach or intestines kind of hanging out the side of their mouth. And obviously it would cause lots of uh, bleeding and it's not very good for the fish. But uh, now that we've switched to circle hooks, it really doesn't happen anymore. They, uh, they're usually hooked in the corner of the mouth or some type of you know, bill raft or something. 
but uh, it, even if they swallow the bait, it seems like it pulls out and doesn't doesn't catch onto their guts. So a great design of the circle hook, and the hookup ratio is just as good, possibly even better, than the J-hooks were. Right now I'm just chasing Mark's, Mark's up on the bow with his fish, and basically I'm just kind of, we're fighting the fish with really light drag. So I'm just taking the boat as close as I can to him, keeping keeping up with the fish while he fights it. Just to uh, help him get a clean release here in a few minutes. Mouth, yep. rolled over. Yep. Put a flat line out with the little small bait on it, and uh, we got a good bite. We've not seen the fish yet, but it's definitely uh, not a small fish. Gonna have to go follow it a little bit, see if we can catch up and see, uh, get a look at it. It's pulling a decent amount of drag here, and it's not jumped or anything. Who knows? It's the fun thing about fishing out here, you can catch you can catch anything. You can catch sharks, marlin, sailfish, tuna, dolphin, wahoo. Lazy angler. Gotta chase all these fish for him. Got the release. Come on, Trent. That ain't no little guy. Ooh. Sailfish. What was that about a filter? Goggle eye. Swimming deeper. I'm not bringing them in the boat, but we can do them on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah. I may be able to get him right back here. He's kind of swimming around. There we go. That's a release. Closed captioning brought to you by Moonlighter Push Poles and Nets. Join us again next week for another episode of Captain's Tales and try one more fishing spot online. Log on to www.captainstales.com.